Hello, welcome to week two, unit eight, list comprehensions. What is a list comprehension? According to the Python documentation, a list comprehension is a way to process all or parts of the elements in a sequence and return a list containing its results. We will see in this unit that we can use list comprehension to build new lists. And this can be done using a very compact comprehensive syntax. And also list comprehensions are quite useful to combine multiple lists or filter lists. So again, it's showtime. Let's jump over to our Jupyter notebooks and I'll show you how list comprehensions are performed. So here we are in the Jupyter notebook. And as mentioned in the introduction, list comprehensions are a way to process all or parts of the elements in a sequence. So let's do this with an example. Assume that we have a list of numbers from 1 to 20. And we want to create a new list that contains the square of these numbers. With the approaches we have taken so far, you would probably write the following program. First, we create a list of the numbers from 1 to 20. Afterwards, we create an empty list squares. And then we use a for loop to iterate through each number in our numbers from 1 to 20 and simply append the square of this number to our result list. And finally, we could, for example, print the result. Let's execute this little program and you see the result are the squares from the numbers from 1 to 20, 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. Using a list comprehension, we can write this little program much more concise. And how does a list comprehension work? Let's use this example. What we first do is we create the list of the numbers from 1 to 20 again. And after that, we can basically transform this whole for loop and creating a new list into one expression. And that's the expression here. A list comprehension contains the square brackets, marking it as a list. And inside the square brackets, we describe how we want to build this new list from the old list. And we want to build this new list by calculating the square of an x. And where does this x come from? For every x in our list of numbers. So that's quite a complex operation that's happening here, but in a very concise syntax. So we are calculating a square for every element x in our list of numbers. And the result will be a list, and this is marked using the square bracket. Let's execute this program. And you see the result is our list of squares from 1 to 400. And it's the same result that we achieved before using the more traditional approach we used before. So basically, a list comprehension is a very concise syntax to create lists. In this first example of a list comprehension, I created a list from a range. Actually, that's not even necessary because a range is a sequence type and we can use sequence types directly in list comprehensions. And that's what we've seen here. Here, I get rid of the numbers variable. Instead, I create a list and this list contains all x squared elements from a range of numbers here. So the list will contain all the squares of x for every x in a range of numbers. Now let's execute this. And again, we see it achieves the same result as our first approach. So and if you now compare this one liner here, uh, creating our squares list to the program that we have written initially, namely 
this um, six lines of code. You see why list comprehensions are so nice, a really powerful construct to perform complex operations and the syntax keeps the program still readable. Once you are used to the syntax, you will immediately see that a list is created here and how this list is created. Let's continue with the second example. It's also possible to use multiple lists in a list comprehension. Assume that we have a list of letters A, B and Z and a list of numbers 1, 2, 3 and we want to create a list containing all the combinations of these two lists. So I want to have a list that contains A1, A2, A3 followed by B1, B2 and B3 and so on. How would I do this traditionally? I would write two for loops. The first for loop that goes through all the letters in this list, a second for loop that goes through all the numbers in this list, then I would concatenate both together and append them to my results list. Using a list comprehension, I can do this much more easily. I can write a list comprehension working through the two lists in just one go. So the combinations I want to calculate is a list comprehension. So we start with the square brackets. What we are going to do is to concatenate a letter and a number converted to a string. And where does the letter and the number come from? The letter comes from for every let L in our letters and the number N comes from for every n inside our numbers list. So this is a list comprehension which transforms two nested for loops into one easily readable line. Let's execute the program and we see indeed the result is the expected combination of all the letters and all the numbers in our initial lists. So a really powerful construct to work with lists or even with multiple lists or to be more precise with sequences or multiple sequences. So maybe I wish we should do this as well should, that you have seen it once so instead of using a list I could also use a tuple here and it would still work. We will be learning about tuples um, later on in, in this course therefore that's just um, to show you that everything I've talked about so far works with all of the different sequence types. One thing you can do with a list comprehension is create a new list from all the elements of an existing list. That's what we've done so far. But list comprehensions are also very powerful to filter lists. As mentioned in the introduction, List comprehensions are also very useful to filter existing lists or sequences. So let's do this again using an example. The example I've created here assume that we have a list of songs. So I have here a list of songs and this list of songs contains small lists again and each of these lists contains a song title and its playground and its play count. So for example, we have here the first list element contains the song Ace of Spades and Ace of Spades has a play count of 99. Similarly, the last element in our list is the song Paranoid, which has a play count of 33. And what I now want to do is I want to filter this list of songs and get all the songs that have been played at least 30 times. How would I do this without list comprehension? I would create a new list. I called it favorite songs here. Then I would loop through my songs. So for every song in the list of songs, I will check if the play count, that's the value at index one, is equal to or larger than 30. And if this is the case, I want to append this song to my list of favorite songs. 
So let's execute the program. And we see that in our initial list, there are four songs that have been played at least 30 times. That's Ace of Spades, Anarchy in the UK, Blue Train, and Paranoid. Well, that's a traditional approach to filtering lists. Using a string comprehension, this can be expressed much more concisely again. So we have here again our list of songs. And now we filter this list using a list comprehension. So our favorite songs are created using a list comprehension, which starts with square brackets and ends with square brackets. For every S, And how is this new list created? So this list contains every S, and the S originates from our song list for every S in songs. But, and now that's the condition, we only add it if the value at position at index one, so that's the play count, is larger than 30. So what this list comprehension states that S is added to the new list if the play count, so that's the index one of our song, is larger than 30. So in so basically we have the same information here as we did in the previous example, although there we iterate through our songs and then we check each individual song. Using a list comprehension, this can be expressed very concisely by just writing one line containing the loop for S in songs and the condition. And we only add elements to our result list that fulfill the condition and the element is just the element S. So, Let's execute this and we see we again receive the same results. So instead of filtering our songs using the traditional approach, with a, which is up here, with an initial list and depending to the list manually, we can simply use a list comprehension. And finally, it's of course possible to combine what we've seen so far. So we can manipulate the elements and filter them. And I'll show you this right here. Assume that we don't want to have the play count in our list of favorite songs, but we just want to have the song title. So of course, we can also manipulate the element that's added to our list. And as a result, we now receive a list that just contains the titles of the songs. Um, that have a play count of at least 30. Let's jump back to our slides. What have you learned in this unit? You have learned how to edit lists or manipulate lists in a more readable way. And you have seen that you can use list comprehensions to even replace nested loops, so to work with multiple lists as well. This was the last unit of week two. Thanks for watching, good luck with the weekly assignment, and I hope to see you again in week three.